talk about Justice League. Let's do it. Now, I, I will say this about the movie. Uh, the expectations were so low on this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really felt like, do you know, like when you have a computer program and it has to get an update and you get a progress bar? <laughs> I really felt like Justice League was getting an update from Joss Whedon and the progress bar got to 50% and it crashed. (laughs) That's what it felt like with this movie. (laughs) Because you could totally tell, oh, that's a Joss Whedon scene. That's what he added. Like the opening scene with Superman, like the kids looking on a smartphone, you know that wasn't a Zack Snyder scene. You know, that was clearly Joss Whedon trying to give these characters some actual character. And um, But here's the thing. You can't put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> At the end of the day, um, you know, a couple of reshoots are not going to fix what ultimately was a monumental problem with this film. And the fix was so clearly trying to make it a Marvel movie oh, that God. then that then I, it, I, it, it lost its own identity in the process. It, I felt like I was watching an off-brand Marvel movie like at the film rack of the dollar store. That like, was halfway it, it was done. It was just fucking yeah. unreal. I was just like, oh, wow, boy, if Marvel would have done that, it would have been so much better. Yeah, I, I, I will say this, though, because the other movies have been so bad, like Batman right. and Superman and Superman, this one's better. Sure. It, this one's, you know, you could say, you know, comparatively, speaking this one's definitely the the best of of those you know two or three movies if you put it next to suicide squad or batman superman it's it's amazing. or or either superman movie. either superman it's amazing if you put yeah. it next to wonder woman you're like Bleh. yeah it's not not as good Bully. so it's and you can see like the joss whedon influence uh because all his scenes <laughs> stick out <laughs> from the rest of the movie and um so here's the thing. I really felt like this movie, like we're talking about, you put it next to those other movies. It's okay. You know, it's 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 almost watchable, and and it has uh, <laughs> that should be yeah, that, yeah. that should be there. Yeah, they're almost like, watchable. Yeah. Almost yeah, watchable yeah. comedy <laughs> film nerds. So because the stuff that Joss Whedon added was so needed and so necessary that he he put this ship in the right direction. So what which makes me a little more excited for the movies to come like are they learning from these mistakes is Zack Snyder finally off the you know these movies can we go in a better direction like the way Wonder Woman did with each with each movie like you know you've got Aquaman coming up you've got all these uh different movies coming up you've got uh Gotham City Sirens you've got oh, Suicide Squad 2 which I am not looking forward to but there's some great great trivia with this movie too this is one of my favorite ones the first one extensive reshoots in London and Los Angeles in mid-2017 added a cost of approximately $25 million to the film's budget it's a $300 million movie $25 million just in reshoots I mean you could make you know 25 independent movies just with those reshoots um, and Henry Cavill worked on the reshoots and MI6 Mission Impossible um, at the same time. He had to sport a mustache for his role in the latter project. However, Paramount refused to let the actor shave it off for the time he played Superman again. That meant that Cavill's facial hair had to be de- digitally removed in post-production. God, is that stupid. Yeah. So can you imagine you're you know, uh, a CG artist and you're like, wait, what do I have to do? <laughs> That's my job. I have to remove Superman's mustache. Really? Really? So, uh, it's... It's a pretty sweet fuck you from the studios. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Kudos to Paramount. <laughs> yeah, kudos to Paramount. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right. It. Yeah, we're going to make this even harder for you guys. We know it's already a mess. <laughs> so, Brent, what did you think of this movie? Um, I'm going to be in the very unpopular. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> we should have let you go let me, first. Let me backtrack. So I didn't grow up reading comic books. I'm seeing all these movies with a completely clean oh, okay. slate and no expectations, and I'm mm. always just like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. Guys fighting in costumes, and I, I like it. I like really shitty movies. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so then so, so you so, weren't you weren't invested in any of the characters from the source material then? No, okay. not at all. And and I saw well, that helps enjoy them. Yeah, I saw <laughs> Batman versus Superman with my girlfriend, and she cried when Wonder Woman came on screen. So any movie with Wonder Woman, we're gonna go see, and all we're right. probably gonna like it. All right, well mm-hmm. that's an interesting point because I, I, I is it though? <laughs> 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 
look, I'm just trying to save this kid. You know what I mean? He comes on and says the movie's not bad, and his girlfriend cries. It wasn't that I bad. Don't, yeah, this show's going downhill right now. I got to pull it out of a tailspin. No, no, that's a no, that's a no. Honestly, Brent, no, that's a fair. That's a fair. Yeah, that's a fair thing because obviously we're coming into it all, all nerd heavy, all mm-hmm. wanting all of these things. So, uh, the, with you know, characters that we grew up with reading, reading, so. not only reading, like so invested in these characters and yes. reading them, and then certain movies like the Superman movies of our youth with Christopher Reeve. The, that first one is pretty amazing. Now there's some silliness in it, but right? That when that first came out and we were kids, it was, it was like, oh my god, unbelievable! Like the effects in this are amazing. Uh, the effects in it were yeah. amazing, um, and and all of that stuff. And then of course, the Nolan Batman's that we've talked about at great length on this show. Mm-hmm. So, if I came up, Brent, in the way you, if I had no like prior thing, I would. That's what I was what I was thinking when I was watching this movie. I was like, if I just was like, a, oh, I don't know, these are cool, I guess. I would have had fun watching that movie. So I'm like big brother to a kid, and we saw the movie. He loved it. He's ten right. years old. He loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Um, I was just like, oh Jesus, and. The other side of that, though, like the Wonder Woman movie, I thought was so great. Right. That if I had never seen the Wonder Woman movie, I think I would have watched this and gone, oh, this is cool. And oh, Wonder Woman was in it. Oh, it'd be better if they used her a little more. Having seen the Wonder Woman movie, I'm like, just get these other idiots out of here. Just let <laughs> Gail Gadot fucking do her thing. Like, I, I don't want, you know, like. Well, I will say the like, like I said, this one went in the right direction because, you know, with Joss Whedon's hand on it. You've got the characters going back in the right direction now. As someone who hadn't grown up reading them, you you probably didn't notice that as much. But if, no. in this movie, um, Superman had more dialogue than in the previous three films, which you know basically Zack Snyder made a mute for the most part. <laughs> uh, so, so this one where oh yeah, this is this is what Superman's supposed to be like. Now I remember this is this is exactly so. So you saw these uh, tonal shifts and also these character shifts in these characters, including from Batman, Superman, even Aquaman. Now, Wonder Woman was the interesting exception because they got her right to begin with, Mm -hmm. so there was nothing to shift. Mm -hmm. So, And she, if you notice, that Wonder Woman character was the same character as in her solo movie. There there was no difference. Um, So... I really felt and part like, of that credit. I mean, obviously, it's in the writing and how they direct it, but yes. part of that is Gail Godot. Yes, when it, she really got that character down, mm-hmm. where some of these other people, like, I, I mean, you know, hipster Aquaman. I mean, just like quippy Aquamany, hipster long hair. I, I, I thought he was delightful. <laughs> 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 Did you cry when he came out of oh, the yeah. water in yeah. Iceland or I whatever? It was beautiful. Um, yeah. So you know, Aquaman's definitely been. Uh, retconned a number of times uh, but that that didn't bother me as much because I felt like um, you know that's also there is some source material to back that up for mm-hmm. sure um, but this is interesting uh, the movie was initially going to be <coughs> excuse me split into two parts Justice League Part 1 and Justice League Part 2 with an alleged singular continuing storyline but by the time filming the idea of the film in two parts seem to have quietly gone away and is now rumored to be two self-contained movies with two related but separate plots. Well, you know, plots, of course, being a very uh, relative term. This one was, the plot was so thin on this movie. It was like, well, why why are you even trying? Just put costume people fighting together, fighting a CG monster. Well, let me ask um, you this, Brenton. So now... So what what is your what is your take on, on, like, the Marvel movies when you've seen those? Like the Avengers and do you view those in the same like wow these are cool or fun or do you see them as a little better than this or do you this are kind of all the same to you or uh, it's it's kind of all the same honestly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um I, they're definitely it, it's better dialogue in the marvel movies mm-hmm. the actions maybe a little better mm-hmm. um but i enjoy all of them i haven't really seen a <laughs> bad superhero movie in the last 10 years really yeah mm. I like all the X Men movies. Mm. Have you? Did you see Suicide Squad? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> but you liked it. I didn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It was a good effort. Yeah, <laughs> I would watch more if they made more. They're making another one. Yeah, I you're mean, gonna, you're you gonna guys get your wonder wish. how these movies make a billion dollars. It's guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we exist. <laughs> We're real people. Fair enough. <laughs> 
Um, now, I thought they did a good job with the Flash, too. But here's the interesting thing is, you know, the Flash on TV, we already have a Flash. And um, there was a lot of similarities. <laughs> Um, so I think the they were like, okay, we're pulling from the comics, but we're also pulling from our other DC properties that are already on the air. I think I think first of all, I think it's weird that they don't that they make a different Flash than the TV show. I think that's weird. I think you should keep the universes consistent, personally. Right. And secondly, they made this guy too much like the new Spider Man, this really young kid. Right. I mean, Spider Man's always sort of that way, mm -hmm. but the new Spider Man that I really like that. Um, we loved the Spider-Man movie. We loved him in Civil War. Uh, I, I again, I just felt like I'm watching just a watered down version of Marvel Spider. -Man. Like they, but they went let make make Arrow or make Flash uh, like this new Spider-Man. Well, I think the one place that did definitely fall flat is like you know Cyborg. I thought Cyborg was completely um, just either either I I don't even know what happened. Either underutilized, underdeveloped, or just not necessary to the Justice League because he's not originally one of the um, the members. If you go back far enough, like the line was based on the founding members from the New Fifty Two origin story, with the exception of Green Lantern. During the Silver Age origin story, Martian Manhunter was one of the founding members. He was replaced with Cyborg um, in the New Fifty Two version, but Cyborg ultimately was a uh, Teen Titan, and on TV as one of the Teen Titans, he's fantastic, but. Really, here I thought they were just trying to make him into like an Iron Man knockoff. Like it really yeah. felt like like is like, well, you you just trying to make him Iron Man? Like it was it was weird. Like with his powers and the way, even the way he was shot flying. Like it was like, oh well, this is you're you're trying to make DC's Iron Man, um, and it just it it just didn't work. So I think um, it was one of the problems with his character just being completely underdeveloped. Like would have liked to have yeah. seen a little bit more uh, going on with his backstory and with his character and with even with his dialogue but we never got we we never really got to know him the way we got to know the other mm -hmm. characters